Well, let's dive into the hottest topics this week. Uh, the Tigers, they've obviously been in the headlines after their um, loss yet last night, but what does their pursuit of Mitchell Pearce say about what's going on at the club? Oh, look, I know a lot of people are saying it's desperate, but I, I don't... So what that they're chasing Mitchell Pearce or the other players that they're signing? doesn't mean they're going to land on Mitchell Pearce. So I think the fact that they're looking at all these halves options, it's the right call because we, we discussed, and a lot of people have discussed Luke Brooks and whether or not... It's working at the Tigers. If there's an A4 sheet of paper with 20 names on it and they're all halves, so what? And Mitchell Pearce, I think, at the back end of his career, uh, can provide that you know, experience and, and leadership and direction around the paddock, which they're clearly lacking. It doesn't look like it's going to head that way, but I don't see an issue with the Tigers exploring that option. Benji making the phone call to Mitchell Pearce. And as they are with a lot of players, I, I don't see an issue because it's clear that Luke Brooks isn't working. Gus? Yeah, Luke Brooks obviously not working. He hasn't worked for a long time, but they've, they keep on re-signing him or they keep on backing him, but the results show that it's not the case. Mitchell Pearce was a wonderful player at the Roost. He's been going great over in the UK. So why not? You know, he could be the right person, but at some, at some stage, all Tigers fans that I want, they, they want to see this progression. They want to see like it's moving in the right direction. I know it's early days, but 0-5 is not a great start. Tim Shins' commentary last night was... I thought I actually I actually liked it. He, he said I'm, I, I won't be walking away from these boys. Like mm. I have full belief in them. I think it's the first real act of defiance from Sheensy that he's he's here for the long haul. And I, I, I didn't I liked that commentary from um, from Tim uh, Mitchell Pearce. Look personally, I don't mind it. I think um, yes, it's it, yes, it's part of where the Tigers are at. Right? They can't they can't lure a Nico Hines. Uh, 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 you know, uh, Jerome Luai, uh, you know, they're not in that ballpark. So they have to think outside the box. And Mitchell yeah. Pearce, for me, he was playing pretty good footy at the, at the Knights when he, when he actually left for Catalan. Yeah. Um, uh, and they need an organising half. Mitchell Pearce fits the bill. If he was keen to come home and the dollars matched up, I'd look at it for sure. Yeah, well, the dollars need to not... There was talk around 750. I, I love Mitchell Pearce, but you can't... If you're the Tigers paying $750,000 for a 34-year-old halfback, it's the wrong decision. But for the right money, then I think he's, he adds leadership. Someone at the Tigers said yep. to me, there's nothing wrong with the orchestra. We're just lacking a conductor. And I think that's the case yeah. with the Tigers. A lot of their new guys that have come to the club have played pretty good football. Bateman's been really good for them. Yep. Uh, Appy's obviously trying to, to create things there, but hasn't had people around him to do the, the damage that he did at Penrith. So, yeah, I, I don't see an issue. But the, the thing with the Tigers Don't is forget, the... Mick, the Dogs also had a look at Mitch Pearce late last year. Mm. The Raiders have kept an eye on him as well uh, prior, prior to picking up Fogarty. So he's, it's not just a Tigers thing, is what I'm saying. The other it says a lot are... about the lack of halves in the competition. It does, that's, it does. that's the other thing. But, but sometimes as well, clubs who are struggling need to pay overs for certain yeah. players to, to start their build. That's right. And that's... Right. Just sort of Looks luck of the draw. have done that for a while. Mm, exactly. Um, all right, moving on. The Jack Whiten saga, electing to go onto the open market. Who's keen? Are there, have, in your dealings, have you spoken to any clubs that you know uh, are keen on signing? Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, this came as a bit of a surprise. You guys have spoken about the player option that, that Jack has uh, uh, basically exercised and said, look, I'm not going ahead with it. I want to test myself on the open market. Uh, that the, the phone rang off the hook because it did catch the game by surprise, clubs by surprise, that suddenly we've got to test an origin playmaker on the open market. Parramatta are definitely keen. The Dolphins are definitely keen. The Warriors are definitely keen. Um, so, look, my personal opinion is I still think Jack stays at the Raiders, but I don't think... Look, they're going to have to pay. They're going to have to pay because of the lot, interest. They're paying a lot already. Yeah, they are. They're paying a million plus for that option next year. I don't know... Look, Jack's a great player, but I don't know how many clubs can slot him in at one point something plus. Like, it's it's a lot of money. I, I know the Dolphins you mentioned there, but Parramatta, if, if they've made the phone call to, to Jack Whiten, you, you move Gutherson for Whiten and pay Mitchell Moses 1.25, Dylan in excess of 800, you've got Gutho nearly 900, and then Jack Whiten. Like, I just don't know how many clubs are going to have the, the ability to match, if not pay, more than Canberra. Do you think it's coming down to premiership results? <sighs> Yeah. I mean, Parramatta are a chance to win a comp probably just above Canberra, but the other side you mentioned, the Dolphins, they're going to pay a million bucks. They're not going to win the comp in probably in his playing career. So, at the end of the day, he wants to win a comp. So, I'm assuming he just wants to test himself on the open market. He'll probably stay in Canberra and hope that that window, which looked pretty good and pretty open a couple of years ago, uh, isn't completely shut. Mm. Mm. Uh, 
Do you think the kitchen sinks should be thrown at Jack White if you're Parramatta? Uh, I don't. I don't. It depends. Um, he might put himself in a better position to win a comp, Mick. Yeah. Than whether oh, the Raiders are going through an interesting phase as a as a footy club, their roster, uh, and uh, probably aren't at that point where Parramatta are. And Jack may weigh up the option of getting closer to a premiership there and not have to take the massive money. They do have players off contract, the Eels. Wong and Blake's on significant money. He's off contract. A couple of Bally Simonson's got an option in his favour. So there is money there, but it's, to your point, it's where they, how they fit him into the system. A lot of people I talk to just say, get the, get the best players to your club and then worry about where they play later. Mm. Maybe that's the case for the Eels. It's a lot of money just to sort of grab yeah. a bloke, especially Guffo, who's said he'll play in the centres, but he probably wants to play fullback. Mm. So is Whiten going to play fullback? They're going to move their seven and six, aren't they? So, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I think he's going to start. The Raiders will probably get a little bit more because of this chat. Mm. All right, we're, yeah. we're probably helping with this. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we spoke about it on Sports Sunday. You spoke yeah. about it with the yeah. boys yeah. before, and now we're talking about it. So, Jack, sweet. We'll send our bank details. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. throw us a bone, brother. <laughs> uh, all right, well, the hot topic last week was, of course, Joseph Sawali'i, and it reached uh, probably the, the peak of the story when uh, Gus Gould spoke on 100% footy saying some things along the lines of, see you later, Joseph, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Did you think that Gus may have overstepped the mark? No, he definitely saying, did, 100%. That? He went personal, which was wrong. I mean, Gus is a godfather, isn't he? We, he's on this, on this channel for a right reason because he knows stuff and he's opinionated. You can sit there and go, oh, that's not good, or yes, I agree with him. But at the end of the day, he's a young bloke who's very talented, who'll probably do a sunny bill, who'll probably go from, you know, rugby league to union and back to rugby league again. To say don't let the, hit, the door, door hit you on the way out is rude. It's personal. He's a young kid who's made a great decision for himself and his family and he shouldn't be thrown under the bus by someone like Gus. If Gus had him at the Bulldogs, do you reckon he would want him to leave with 18 months to go? He'd want to win two competitions with him. So, you know, that's why I was a bit disappointed in those comments from Gus. It's got us chatting, of course, but don't get personal on the poor kid. I worry about the bloke's mental fitness. Has he got a village around him looking after him? Because all he's really done is looked after himself, which is... He totally has that right. I, I, he shouldn't I, be told by the godfather of rugby league to, you know, sorry, mate, see you later now because he's made a decision for himself. I don't know if it was personal, to be honest, Gus. Like, I, How's look, it not personal? Well, I, look, I, I'd, I've had my run-ins with Gus and Danica will tell you, I'm not uh, best of friends with Gus, but he's entitled to his opinion there. I don't agree with his opinion, but the fact is... I don't think it was personal. The reality is he's leaving the code. A guy who, with like us... In 18 months, though, he can do a lot for rugby well, league that's in right. His time. opinion is to go now. I, I don't think he should go now. Like, let me just make that clear. I don't agree with Gus's opinion. But I don't think it was personal. And even like, to talk about mental health, like Joseph Suwali knew what he was getting into when he started exploring the possibility of being a code hopper. Sure. I, I don't think there's an issue. Someone like Cody Ramsey, who's gone through hell and back with his health, I can understand talking about the mental health around his, his well-being. But Suwali, Mitchell Moses, guys that are in contract discussions, I think it's part and parcel of the territory you go into. If you start to demand that sort of money, you enter that conversation, you enter that area where you can expect criticism. And Gus's criticism, whether or not you agree with it, I think he's entitled to his opinion. Yeah, I think he's entitled to his opinion and he gets paid to, for his opinion, and that's great. But as soon as you sort of start saying, don't, look, don't worry about the door hitting you on the way out, that's when it starts getting personal. He didn't personal. attack his character. He didn't attack... Him as a person. He's basically saying you're a traitor, you've gone to the other coach. But, but that's, that's what he yeah, is, though. They, they, he can, is. They, can, they can coexist. They can they coexist can. and have done for ages. I mean, I do a brekkie show with Wendell Sater. He was one of the first ones to go back and forth. That's how it works and stuff. We should be backing these young blokes and saying, so great to have you in our, in our code. We've got you for another 18 months. Go and enjoy yourself. A bit like Volandi said. Twice but, the pay, but it's like, half but, the work. But I do understand. I understand where you're coming from. It's like you know, if you're a Roosters and you're a Rabbitohs fan, it's the same as if you're a rugby league fan and you're a rugby union fan. You, you're not gonna. I'm not, you, I'm not so you, sure. You, I don't agree with that. I'm more of a. I'm a leaguey, but I love my you're union a lover. as well. You're I'm a lover. lover of, I'm a lover of everything. Actually, I'm a lover, not a fighter, which I find this difficult. And even I, this conversation. And I think, and I think that's the, Gus's passion was showing through. He doesn't want our game to lose the, you know, the best players, and he, and you know, it is disappointing that we are going to lose someone and I think that's where his comments yeah, came from. Yeah. Look, I'd be if if Joseph was playing for the Bulldogs, I'd be <laughs> stunned if those comments yeah, he wouldn't have said are that. coming no. out. He wouldn't have said right? that. And um, how many games of, of Roger Tulvasa Sheck have you watched? Yeah, not, not, many. not many. Okay. So what's the great fear? Yeah, but That's you and I, right. are gonna, you, we're going to go watch Joseph Suwali when he goes plays now, for the Wallabies. But I'll, yes, watch, I'll watch the Wallabies. I'll, I'll, I'll watch his first Gus, game. Gus I'll watch the Wallabies with you. or without Feel him. Good, I'll watch the All Blacks with or without Roger. Well, you do. See, I don't, do you watch what, rugby? No. No. 
I'll watch Joseph Sawaliti when he plays for the Wallabies. I'll tell you what, though. And Gus, the Waratahs? Phil Gould won't be watching it. He won't be watching <laughs> oh, I'd it. I'd be surprised. Gus, he probably will. No, out of will principle, be. I reckon he won't watch it. <laughs> yeah. OK. All right, well, that is it. The buzzer is gone. <laughs> That's my phone. That That's it. Gus on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Call you back, brother. <laughs> Sorry. We love you, Gus. <laughs> love you, mate. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us here on the Sunday Footy Show. We'll see you next week.